Absolutely, those rough catches would have taken off a few runs from this. Now, these are the wickets. Fayaz started off well, picked up Chandimal without scoring. Then Mendes soon found out that it's difficult to play that Yorker first up. Catch it was the call, but who was the question? Because cover really wasn't tall enough, as Sundaram sir put it. Then some brilliant shots started to unfurl from the bat of the right hand. Nine out of ten times that would have been taken. Then came the Jatinder opportunity. R Reverse Cup is not being their best friend today for Roman. Then there was the this was the era where the the run making was done in singles and twos, and occasionally the boundaries were hit. Then towards the end was all assault. Khavarali was brilliant with the ball in hand in the first over. But thereafter, it was a different story. Fayaz started to go for runs. Every baller started to go for runs. And the batsmen were able to time their shots to perfection in the early part of the over and nurdle the singles and tools and milk the bowling thereafter. That's been Sri Lanka's approach with the bat in hand. Nesanka scored 8 of 14. Chandimal, first ball, duck. And so was Mendit, followed him, followed him immediately. But what an innings by Fernando and Shanaka. 83 of 59, well supported by 51 of 24 by Shanaka. Rajapaksha scored 15 of 21. 162 for 4, just 5 extras of the 20 overs. This has been a brilliant recovery from where Sri Lanka was. Yes, a 7 ball is used by Oman to fill the 20 overs. Kalimullah picked up a wicket in his quarter of 4. Was looking good and Ahmad, Ahmad Fayaz, but getting a game today, making an impact. A pick of the bowlers with two wickets, slightly expensive towards the end. We'll have to work on that with the World Cup around the corner. Zishan Maksud going wicketless after a long, long time. Mohammad Nadim in his four overs went for a lot of runs as well. Aki Villiers was given just a couple of overs to see what's if he's turning the ball, if he's troubling the batsman, wasn't to be. And Kavarelli doesn't bowl out today, but does pick up a wicket in his three overs. This has been a magnificent recovery and uh, this has also tested the Sri Lankan middle order. So we'll take a break and uh, we'll be back with the second innings once we would not be happy about it. They've had their own reasons. This is the way wickets fell. All shots offered will have to be rethought. They've gifted their wickets, Oman batsman. A very good catch by Dinesh Chandimal. This was a miscued stroke, which meant the end of Zishan Maksud. What is really interesting to watch is the first three wickets of Oman actually went behind square. Right behind the wicket keeper, all attempting to play those uh, shots, which are the non-orthodox, the unorthodox shots. And two men were lurking, just two men outside the rope allowed for the first six inches, outside the 30-yard circle. And one of them was either third man or final. Like, still, they wanted to go for that shot. That's the upshot of the game. 162 for Sri Lanka. A brilliant fight back to get to 162 in the end. And Oman falling short by 19 runs. Despite Naseem's 40 of 22. And a glimmer of hope from Mohammad Nadeem. But not good on the occasion. Well, I would say Oman will definitely take heart out of this performance. Uh, they've done really well. Considering the situation that they were in. They came back strong. A few learnings from this game. I'm so sure that the coaches would have made their notes. Giving a little too many runs at the fag end of the Sri Lankan innings and as far as the batting is concerned losing a few wickets a little too quickly